Welcome to Termite Machine Works. My name is Keith, and today we get back onto the mat tracks. All right, Brian, uh, we're, we're finally going to get on here. Uh, I get a couple cold nights here, and I go, you know what? Brian's going to have snow before the rest of us. <laughs> Actually, I, 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 I just hope uh, you get your fair share. I mean, you know, it's. Uh, I just don't want you to miss out on any fun uh, with your project here. So we're going to get on it. We're opening up all the boxes, and I've got the first unit that we looked at originally. I've got a label down here, number one, and I'm going to open up the rest of the boxes here. We're going to get all the components out here because I need to go ahead and start taking a mic, and I want to mic up the center pivot that these all mount on because I'm going to jig the rest of the holes off of that, probably in the Bridgeport, maybe in the K&T as well. So it's a universal type of jigging. Um, so we're going to get these opened up and get these all laid out on the table and then we're going to start looking at measuring up the bore making the jig for it. So that's what we're going to start with. All right, and it really does look like you, know, you created these in nice. The boxes are all in good shape. And uh, that's nice. You did bag up the uh, the popcorn there so that the pieces are all in here and we don't have a whole bunch of that flying around in the shop today. Thank you very much. All right. All right, we're going to label this number two. Hmm, little uh, RTD, maybe uh, that was a way of uh, uh, keeping some dampness and moisture out, I don't know. Um, anyhow, we're going to label this number two. You're right. The one that you originally sent with me, uh, or sent to me, had uh, the farthest off wear on the holes. This one still has a couple O-rings in here, so I can see how they were actually setting in there. All right. I'll go ahead and I'll open up the other uh, two boxes, and we'll get them laid out here. All right. We picked up uh, our four to five mic and our inside mic set. We got a piece of paper here and we're going to go ahead and list these uh, one, two, three, four and all right now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to four point them just meaning that we're going to take a, a crisscross type measurement here Unless we get an extreme out around or something. And uh, we're going to try to pick the middle. As far as the depth there, it should be pretty close to the most true or round. Four inches, six, thirty-two and a half. Four inches, six thirty-three. Now we're just going to go ahead, just for kicks here. We're going to go ahead. And we're just going to crisscross those dimensions there, and they're like right close. So uh, we're within a thousandths of roundness. And just about four, a little bit over four six thirty two, four six thirty three. Four 
number two here. We have 4631 there. Same thing here, four six thirty one and a half. And number four. This is a good sign that they're all within a thou and a half of each other here. Means we're gonna have a good uh, location on a jig. Six thirty one same thing. Four six thirty two. All right, I I happen to have a piece of aluminum slug uh, that was left over from a job, and I'm going to be able to create a round diameter and a shoulder that we can locate this hub now. I'm going to be working both sides uh, of these bores because we're going to, this is a small one here, this is actually going to be, the small flange ones are actually going to be the replacement for the bushings on this part here and the large ones, the large flange diameter are going to be the ones that we'll replace here. We're doing this so that we won't have to get in here and well build and replace this material that's worn down from the sides of the linkage. All right, and the link are these portions here, and and uh, these also right in here as well. Now these pins. We got a new one in here, I believe. He supplied me with new pins. I have uh, two of each because they're a little bit different. One has the zerk fitting coming in the end, and one doesn't. And they also have the square bore that keeps them from rotating, so they fit through the linkage like that. All right. The center has a grease uh, groove there because the grease or zerk oil channel is actually here on the end. There's a, a set screw in there, but that is where it flows there, then flows through the other section there. These two here should be greased with the zerk fitting on the outside, and then the pivots that are on these arms here, you grease with the zerk that's coming in from the side. It actually goes down between these two bores. Uh, so we're going to be working both sides of this. So this jig is going to have to incorporate this thing possibly flipping over and laying one way or the other way. Now, it's not exactly centered, so it's not splitting the line. Let me 
hold one up like this. So the face of this in relationship to this face over here is not going to be the same as the relationship from here to here. So we're going to have to make an offset or two different ring jigs. Basically what we're going to have this diameter here and a shoulder out and a cap and a draw bolt. Alright, then we'll be able to create a shim pack or support because we're going to be holding back here but we also, we're going to have a little bit of tool pressure and we want to make sure that we're not flexing this thing around and getting odd shaped holes. We want nice true diameter holes so that the stock bushings that we buy off the shelf or that Brian buys off the shelf in the future will be able to install in this. Now these will be consumable items so he has a certain amount of run time and then he will be able to pull this apart, break down in his own garage there in the summertime when he's not using it, knock these out, press in the new ones, put them back together, rock and roll. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to take some dimensions from this face up to this face and vice versa on the other side there and we're going to jot that and we're going to go in the and put this in the uh, closing lane and we're going to start machining this slug to accommodate this bore and the offsets that we want for the bridge port or the K&T depending on where we decide to use them and actually you can't count out the drill press uh, because basically we're going to be individually locating each of the o-ring grooves which I just finished peeling out all the rest of the o-rings here and people are asking why you don't put seals and this and that um, in the environment and seals at the face and everything is is creating a lock and the grease is not able to disperse itself where it needs to go because it's locked up and uh, by the new thinking that we're going along with these bushings and free flowing and pumping it full of grease and letting the grease push out the dirt, the crud, the moisture and all of that um, we're, we're thinking more along the lines of, of heavy equipment operating and tracks and, and the filth that it is and what's going to give the best wear with the least expense and the easiest to change out on downtime. Alright, we're going to go from this face here over to this center section where there is no wear here and here. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to use our regular uh, Gesso meters here or dial calipers and uh, we're measuring up that this is about two thousandths under one uh, but we're just going to call it one and we're going to measure from the top down with our depth measurements here and then we can subtract off an inch from there and we're at 3 inches 930 and we're going to do this a couple different times here okay we're basically going to call that 2930 there now we're going to go over here and we're going to double check this side here as well and they should be relatively square but we are getting a little different We're almost getting 980 here. Alright, we got 920 over here. We got 970 over here. 2970 and it actually measures 3 but we got the 1 inch off from the scale. So we got 2970 and 2920 uh, over here. So we're about 50 thousandths difference on our measurement there. So we're going to go through our next ones here. We're going to we're going to check all those out. And of course, this is number 4, so we're going to jot down number 4 at 
2 inches, 970 to 2 inches, 920. Alright, to get this measurement from here to here, we're going to go ahead and take a piece of inch and a half uh, nice square stock that I have, lay it right on here, come with a straight edge over and then measure down. Now, this has got raised burrs on it, so we're just taking the file, and we'll just draw a file and tell we take the rotating burrs off of where the gear was riding and building that diameter up there so that we can lay that flat stock across here and across there. Now we know it's going to lay there without rocking or tilting. Alright, and we're going to go ahead and get a 2x4 underneath there so we can hold it level without having to hold it up and hold the scale at the same time. Alright, we're going to go ahead and we're going to hold this out here and we're just basically this is going to be uh, no matter what even on the other side we were trying to see um, how close each side was and right now we just want to get a mean measurement over here because this is going to be holding off the bottom of the table and then we're going to be clearing the protrusion of the rough casting in this area right here. So we're just going to go ahead and eyeball this out here and it looks like 4, 3, 50 or so. 4, 3 over here. So basically we know that, that about 4 and 3 eighths would be safe. Um, uh, excuse me. We didn't subtract our inch and a half here. Alright, so we're going to have to subtract that. So we are... Alright, this is an uh, inch and a half here, so minus inch and a half from our measurement here, which is uh, 4 and 3 eighths, so that would be 3 and 3 eighths, 2 and 7 eighths. 2 and 7 eighths is about the height difference between here and there. But we got we got some obstacles here that we need to come over the top of. So that's like one four hundred. So that's protruding up about an eighth of an inch there. This is actually one two hundred here. So that's protruding up almost a quarter inch. Um, so it wouldn't. It really wouldn't hurt us to go ahead and have uh, like three and three quarters, three and a half, something like that, height off of this to get this up off of the table and clear this uh, rough casting here. All right, after figuring out pretty much the mean distance that we'll need for the space to hold this up off the table and guide and register this, and also on the other direction the same way, of holding the part up off of the table so it's registering on the flanges itself. We've got a piece here that's 10 inches and falling right in about six and a half inches and three and a half inches. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to mark this right at our six and a half inches or so. And we're going to go put this in the uh, bandsaw. And we're going to cut that right off right there. Instead of parting it off, our hole coming through the middle is only going to be clearance for a half an inch on clamping this thing down to the table and having a piece of all thread coming through with a lock nut and then continue coming up for a nut uh, to hold down on the top plate that will sandwich that bore at the two different heights. So we'll have two different jigs to hold this in both directions because we're going to be running flanges. So there's going to be a bore and then a counter bore for the flange of that, the thickness of that, which is about 3 16 of an inch of material per side and I believe an eighth of an inch. An eighth of an inch on the depth. And then that will take care of that wear area right in there on each one of these without having to weld up and remachine and really get into some extensive work. So we'll be able to bore these out, counter bore each of the holes one at a time, each side one at a time, 
and uh, then we'll be able to press these in. The existing grease channels will fit right between. The bearings are going to come so there will be a slight gap in there. And that's the plan. So, Alright, I'm going to go get this in the saw. It wasn't uh, just the other day I went ahead and I put a brand new blade on here. Uh, I actually was missing a couple teeth off of there. I had a had a grabbing part and a couple missing teeth. But I went ahead and I put another blade in. The also I went ahead and unburied the sump. I had uh, almost a um, we probably could have filled that can about four times with chips. Um, it was pretty, it, it does collect pretty fast. Um, and get a little bit of space here. But this thing's been running real good. I'm uh, real happy with it. Coolant's still working great. a good idea putting the rubber in here and it does get a lot of that uh, oil off of the blade right away but it still does come and hit this area it does drain back into there to cut off of there we're going ahead and we're kind of planning out on a locating post or jig that we're going to be able to put in the spindle or a tool holder or a drill chuck to align the axis with each one of these holes some of the holes where the pin is right uh, as elongated the hole so we can't locate off of those and for how big this thing is um, and how a little bit off here and there that we found, we're going to individually locate each hole. The O-ring groove on each one of these, and that's what I'm doing is I'm measuring across, and I'm getting like 830, 825 to 830 on every one of these. So I'll be able to make a round registering jig that will be able to come down and locate those O-ring holes by eye. And we will be within a couple thousands of being center line of all these holes. And for a pivoted action, uh, that's just going to be more than close enough for the movements of and the requirements of these mat tracks. time I'm happy when I see a cut coming down and it's straight and 90 degrees to the axis of your material.
Alright, let's go in and start turning a couple uh, fixtures. <laughs> 